My name is Brad Knight. I'm the Director of Cardiac Electrophysiology at Northwestern Medicine. For patients who have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, who are candidates for catheter ablation, have had symptomatic recurrent uh, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, we limit the first ablation procedure to pulmonary vein isolation. When we pick a tool to isolate the pulmonary veins, the tool that we currently pick almost all the time, the first time procedure is a cryo balloon. And I believe it's a very effective tool at achieving durable, safe pulmonary vein isolation. And when really focusing on some of the complications specific to cryo, such as phrenic nerve injury, we can greatly uh, reduce the complication rate. So for pulmonary vein isolation, whether it's with a large common ostium, if it's a pulmonary vein dependent atrial flutter, uh, pulmonary vein reconnection after surgical maze procedure, we tend to use the cryo balloon as our first uh, tool to do that. In addition to our expertise and experience with the cryo balloon, we have outstanding outcomes uh, that we track. We have a quarterly quality meeting, and we also participate in the American Heart Association Get With The Guidelines AF Registry. So we've looked at patient experiences with general anesthesia versus uh, sedation. We've looked at predictors of recurrences, and my colleague Rod Passman has published a lot of this data uh, looking at our cryo balloon experience. Our approach for patients with persistent or long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation differs somewhat from patients who have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. For patients that have early persistent atrial fibrillation who are undergoing their first procedure, we still focus on providing durable pulmonary vein isolation. We use the cryo balloon just as we do for patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. For patients with persistent atrial fibrillation, it's long-standing. They've been in atrial fibrillation for over a year. There are some other therapies that have proven to be helpful. Uh, there's the convergent hybrid surgical procedure that we do with our colleagues, uh, Dr. Andre Trilla in the cardiac surgical program, who also has expertise with a TT maze or a totally thoroscopic maze in patients with long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation. For patients who undergo their first procedure who have persistent atrial fibrillation and significant left atrial pathology, left atrial dilatation, left atrial scarring, we often will do more than just pulmonary vein isolation by ablating the posterior wall of the left atrium. This is an approach we also take for patients who come back for redo procedures uh, at the time when their pulmonary veins are uh, already isolated. And we moved in the direction of using high power, short duration radio frequency energy uh, to isolate the posterior wall. We're also targeting these patients for clinical trials. Uh, as you know, patients with persistent atrial fibrillation represent the most challenging category of patients with AF that can be refractory to standard ablation approaches. So it's often that we enroll those patients in a clinical trial. I think we have the best EP program in Illinois. We have one of the best EP programs in the country, and our focus has always been on atrial fibrillation management. 